let's start with you. I mean, is it really that grave situation to warrant tinkering around with children's grades? I would argue that it is. At the moment, children are assessed in schools and told how they're doing on a basis of comparison with children that could be a year older. All we're really saying is that children should be given an accurate picture of how well they're doing for their age. So they're comparing themselves with peers at the same age rather than this big difference in age. I suppose it is a big difference if you're that young. A year's a, a, a long time for a five-year-old, isn't it? So something should be done, Liz, do you agree? A year is an enormously long time at that stage in our development. B between four and five, there are huge uh, brain developments and physical developments. But the, we already have the possibility of staggering starts. So you can start in January if you're an August baby, let's say. And as soon as you start having uh, different pass marks for different ages of babies, you are getting into such a horrible pickle. It, it seems very arbitrary as well. So if you're born in August, you'll get an extra sort of three points. But if it was in July, you'll get two. And then what's to say that if you were born on the last day of July, you know, why shouldn't you get three points like someone born on the first day of August? Because that's only, you know, that's only one day apart, but that's made a huge difference. And I've had a lot of communication from parents this evening on the way down uh, to this programme, those who have August babies mm -hmm. or those who were even August children themselves, mm -hmm. saying they would have absolutely hated to have been treated differently from mm -hmm. everyone else. It seems to me to be sort of trying to make a level playing field in a world where there isn't a level playing field and there are other ways that we it's, could help them, perhaps. It's certainly true that it's not a level playing field at the moment, uh, but I would argue that we're actually treating children differently at the moment. We're saying that the organs borns have to perform that little bit, work a little bit harder, do a little bit more to get to the same level just because they're younger. But, but they do, that's the thing, and, and they do, and, and perhaps they need extra help or extra one-on-one -on -one tuition, but, but to suddenly go in there and say, well, you can pass your GCSEs if you've got fewer marks than somebody sitting right next to you. We know, for one example, thing. that tall people do better in life. Taller people earn more on average, mm -hmm. are more confident. Well, I think small people <laughs> should be given an extra mark. You know, well, we have to take this. You're what opening would... Pandora's box potentially, and I'm sure I, teachers I watching this will be agree. thinking, we don't need any more admin and rubbish. Well, this rubbish, wouldn't be done really. in schools. This would be done externally, and they, these scores would just be provided back to schools. And it's actually not an arbitrary assignment. What we've done is look at all test scores for children in the country and see how much, on average, those born younger in the what year. What about August-born babies who are really clever? Do they still deserve extra Well, they points? would, because the fact they're very clever um, compared to those and that are September year older born means babies they're who more, really even struggle, more. Do they deserve to be penalised? Uh, well, we're not saying penalised, we're saying... Well, they won't get as many points, assessed, will they? Well, they'll be assessed for their age. And actually, it's in the benefit of a September-born child that is struggling for that to be made aware. Perhaps they do need extra help. Perhaps they have some special educational need that's not being identified. So actually, assessing everything at a child's age is more helpful for the child, and it's more helpful for the school. It's more helpful for their development later in life. I don't think anybody would argue with that. And, and you know, we do need to look at individual needs. And there are premature babies as well. There are, you know, mm, there, are, there are children who struggle for all kinds of different reasons. But yes. the solution to that... That, I would argue, is absolutely not what to have different pass marks. Think, for different... Well, I mean, the solution, as I said at the beginning, I think is to, to, you know, a good primary school teacher looks at every pupil in the class and knows those who need a little bit more help than others, and also we can have these staggered starts. You as a parent, you know if your child you sense is just a little bit not ready to start school, sort of emotionally and physically mm -hmm. as well as intellectually, um, and therefore you can start them six months later. Yeah, but they actually... have to hit the exams being marked the same. I, I certainly agree that there are other things that can be done and we're not saying this is the only policy that has to happen. We're saying this is a very simple, straightforward thing that could be done. And actually we have a bit of research where it says that flexibility in school starting age is not really the best thing to do. Do you think it's, parents are now going to try and time the conception say, so they have September babies? This is what you started now, is it? Well, it could be. It could be. It's not the easiest thing to do, probably, but it could happen in the future. Closing word from you, Liz? closing word for me is I, I don't think it's a very good idea and I don't think pupils will like it. They'll suss it out very quickly and it'll cause all okinds okay. of problems. Ellen and Liz, thanks Thank you very much. much for your time tonight. Thank you.